I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for complete courses and hundreds of tune track free videos. Today, we're going to check out Aerosmith's Walk This Way, the intro beat, and learn how to program it. And but Aerosmith, that was my mom's favorite band growing up, my older brother's favorite band, so I couldn't help to have this embedded into my soul. And here's one of their most iconic beats. Well, let's check it out real quick. Simple enough, but the style, man, the iconic style, it's amazing. Um, I chose to bring up the post rock Easy X, and I'm on small oak. And on the mixer tab, I cranked up the reverb because there's a lot of verb on the walk this way track. It's not even the same type of verb. They use them like a plate in the original recording. It's really wet. And um, when I hit the snare drum in this, there's such a transient going through the reverb that I actually turn the snare down. And of course, this is such a hi-hat drum lick. I turn the hi-hat up. And these drums don't sound like the Aerosmith Walk, the Way, Walk This Way drums, but I just need to get a sound up that I'm comfortable enough playing with. And I thought I'd show you guys post-rock, but you can use any of the three core libraries in Easy Drummer 3, the Bright Room, Main Room, or Tight Room. It's not going to be hard to get a comfortable sound to work with. So if you've been watching my grid editor videos about programming drums, you know, our lingo should be starting to connect now a bit. And if it's not, do watch the videos before this one, especially the Queen We Will Rock You. I explain a lot of stuff in there. So I have a measure looped because this is just a one measure drum beat. And I'm just going to throw a back beat down because that's 90% of this whole beat. It's a back beat based beat. And I'll just talk about a backbeat as I program it, because I cover it in detail in my other videos. That's the snare on the two and the four. Keep in mind, I have my humanize button on today. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And since we're doing a backbeat based beat, I usually trust the humanize button a bit. It does a lot of work for me. So I'll put the snare on the two and the four. We're in measure four here, by the way. I'll put a kick drum on the one in the three, and I'll draw out eighth note hi-hats, and I already have eighth notes selected in my resolution menu. Let's hear it. That is the majority of the beat. We're almost done besides going after a couple small details. But if you get the easy answers right on the test first, it really helps you focus on the more harder answers, and we're just going to go after them, the harder questions. <clears throat> What's in your face is that hi-hat squelch. When the drummer takes his foot off the hi-hat pedal, so that hi-hat can open up and sustain. It's on the first beat, it's on the downbeat of this beat. So let's open up the hi-hat articulation which is this little tiny menu right here next to your hi-hat. When you expand it, you get a ton of options underneath the hi-hat, a ton of them. So let me grab the arrow tool and let's just move our downbeat hi-hat. We're using these terms because we've learned them in the previous videos. And let's just open this up because all these eighth note hi-hats here, they're tight and staccato, right? Well, we need that's what we need. So that first downbeat hi-hat, we just got to open it up. The drummer's got to take his left foot off the pedal so the hi-hats open up and we can get some sustain. And here's where you can really do your own thing and create your own style, whether you're programming Walk This Way or you're doing hi-hat squelches in your original music. So definitely tune into this, okay? Hi-hat closed excuse me, closed edge and closed tip. That just depends on whether the drummer is, the drummer has the hi-hat completely closed. That just, the difference is edges. The drummer's playing with the shank of his stick, which is usually more powerful, more of a concussion impact happening. And closed tip is also really tight staccato sound, except he's using the tip of the drum stick, which has more of a tap than a hit. It's a way to look at it. You don't have to drag the dots around to hear these. You can just click on the lane 
and you can audition the articulation. Right? So this first down B hit should not be a closed articulation. So let's just drag it down here. Let's hear this. This is open too. So the hi-hats went from really close to just opening up a bit. We're close. Let me grab this. I already know what I want. It's as open as possible. It's really the style of walk this way. We're going to touch this up when we humanize a little bit more. But that's generally it. The downbeat hi-hat is an open hit and then it's closed eighth note hi-hats after it. And the hi-hat naturally squelches in this case because the drummer is closing, pushing down on his foot for this closed hi-hat artic articulation. Psst, psst, listen. You can actually solo up these lanes. So here's just all my hi-hats. And then I can hit the solo button, listen. What else is missing from the beat? It's the kick drum, and this is a little bit tricky because calling out that there's an open hi-hat on the downbeat, that's obvious because that's like the trick of the beat. But the kick drum, do do do, it's doing that, do do do. So it's going do, do do do, do 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 do. And if you're not used to hearing drums and you can't memorize beats real quick and then hum out just the individual parts, I get it. Let me work with you. We laid down a backbeat, backbeat based beat. It means the snare's on the two and the four. And typically, this is not a rule, there's usually a kick on the one and three. And that is the case in this beat. And then when you lay down your backbeat, you might be thinking about this second kick drum, which is on beat three, and you understand there's extra kick drums before and after it. Do, ga. Do, 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 ga. Whether you can hum it out or not, you can at least find the target kick drum, which is on beat three, and go, there's something before and after it, because there's a bunch of beats. So, if it was complete, you know, newbie time, and I didn't know what I was doing at all, I'd probably stay on eighth notes, and I would draw a kick in before and after this, and just listen to it and decide if something's right or wrong. Let's hear it. It's funny, that hi-hat squelch really makes almost any beat sound good. That squelch really gives it the groove. But going back to the kick drums, it's obviously closer. It's obviously closer, but it's not perfect. So let's figure out what kick drum we want to keep, which one we want to remove. To explain it without theory, there's kind of a skipping feeling. do 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 and in this case, we got do, 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 really straight sounding. So, and that skipping feeling really happens first. So, here's that kick on beat three, which we know is there, and that skipping feeling happens first, so maybe this is incorrect. Now let's hear the beat. That's, it sounds like nothing is wrong here. We're just missing a note. Great. So we've been working with eighth notes, and that skipping feeling is a faster feeling, okay? So we want a faster resolution. So I'll just go up the ladder and resolution to 16 notes, and now let's color a few kicks in and see if we can get it there. And for you drummers there, it's, you know, it's a, a three and is the note duration, uh, three and, right? But if I was just trying to get my bearings, I'd look around the three, because I know the three's on the money, and i just color a note in, now that we're switched to 16 notes, and let's see if this sounds right. Again, another cool beat, but not right. Let me undo that, and we'll color in the line next to it, before it. And we're there. And so for you amateur drum programmers, 
that don't have rhythmic music theory off the tip of your tongue, you know, and can't just call out rhythms. That would be a way where I would try and approach this and hit this. And as you do these real simple, simple feeling out tasks of going from eighth notes to 16th notes and really realizing this is a 16th note before, as you, you know, just pay attention while you make those moves. And before you know it, you'll be calling out the theory. You're just going to learn the theory naturally. And in the future, you'll be working much, fist, much quicker. But this is a three and. A three and is how you would count it. So there's a kick on the one, a kick on the a uh of two, a kick on the three, and the kick on the and of three. And if you wanted to count, we would go one, a three and. One, a three and. Here we go. A three and. One, a three and. And there's the beat. I, I should have got a crackier snare, but I'm really not focused on tone, okay? But what else can we do before we go? Because we've had the humanize button activated, so it's been humanizing the timing and the velocity for us automatically. And for the most part, that's been working for us. So if I select all the kick drums, we can see our downbeat's hard, that uh, of, of beat two, the uh, that pickup note to this kick on three. It's quiet, and that's good because a drummer playing with one single right foot going ba ba ba, ba ba ba, you know, that first hit before the three, the dude's foot's going, those two quick staccato hits, you know, that first one's gonna be a little weaker to ramp up to that three because we hit hard on three, okay? So this is actually a good call of this being quiet, and that's what the humanized button did for us, so I can't complain about that. Listen to that kick drum, and let's just agree that whether you like this velocity or not where it is, it should be at least quieter than the next kick. Listen. Almost like a heartbeat. There's something to it. It's not mechanical. You know, that's a beautiful thing, especially for working on the grid. This really helps out. The snares are on the two and the four, so we just want this cranked up, you know. We're ACDC, we're balls to the wall. Whether it should be 100% up or not, you can make the call. It depends on the tone of the Easy X or drum set you prefer. Hit. Um, when you switch from one drum kit to another, those two different drum kits might respond differently to your dynamics. I did a slight serious pause there, so you might remember that sentence I just said. Awesome. And that hi-hat, let's work on the hi-hat a little bit. Since I think Easy Drummer, the humanized button did well with the kick and the snare. Now let's check out the hi-hats. And it does really well. The pulse, the quarter note, when you count one, two, three, four, when you bob your head and your head goes down, for the most of us anyway, and when you tap your foot, that's the pulse. Notice that the humanized button is really pushing upwards on the pulse, on beats one, two, three, and four, and it's laying back on the beats in between. This is really obvious, natural, awesome stuff. But lastly, before we go, just to give you more, is this squelch. I mean, you can do so much with it, whether you're stylizing Walk This Way or whether you're using squelches in your music. Let's check out this squelch real quick and let's check out our hi-hat articulations real quick. These articulations are really closed. It's like the most aggressive but closed articulation here. You know, if you wanted a looser feel before we even talk about the squelch, I could just select this closed edge lane and notice all my hats are selected. And since I have snap on, I can just drag this around and audition articulations instantly. Right, let's hear it now. Now, if someone was covering Aerosmith, he might be a little disappointed that sounds off, but that's the whole idea. We can really open up this beat, you know, change the pocket, the feel to it. Let me hit undo. We're going to stay on closed edge. Here's the coolest part that I'm most excited about. It's going from this open articulation 
to this closed articulation. And we go back to eighth notes so our vertical lines make more sense. The distance between this open articulation and this closed articulation doesn't need to be that distance. And that distance is going to completely decide the vibe and feel of that squelch. So let me turn snap off. And let me grab this closed hi-hat, because this closed hi-hat decides when this open hi-hat closes. Right now it's the duration of an eighth note. I turn snap off so we're not um, obeying this uh, vertical grid anymore. Now listen to this. This isn't even theoretically in time, right? I'm not on a vertical line. I'm not on a 16th note, a 32nd note, like I'm floating around. Now listen. And does it feel wrong or just does it feel different? Yeah, that feels more aggressive and cool, in my opinion. We can disagree. That's totally fine. Let's do the opposite. Now listen to this. Now we're late closing this. And theoretically, I mean, if you get a calculator out, we're technically late and we fail. But if in our creative minds, this lateness brings a vibe. Check it. So cool, man. That's so cool. So let me put it back where we had it. Just ballpark it within milliseconds. Here we go. Now we're kind of proper and it sounds fine as well, but those three different examples, totally different, totally different. Rushing, dragging, or on the money, all three cool things. And this isn't exactly something you can do anywhere. It's just going to sound like a mistake as you do this in other places. But when it comes to squelching a hi-hat, you really have freedom to be out of time because we really don't hear the hit of this closed edge hi-hat. And then we'll cap it off with this. If you're doing this in this closed edge hit feels too percussive, like you can hear the attack, and you want it out of time on purpose, but the attack is throwing you off, maybe a different sounding hi-hat will do that, try the closed pedal articulation instead. Even though I'm sure Joey Kramer is actually playing that second eighth note hi-hat. I didn't watch his live videos or anything, I don't know. But even though he's probably playing that second hi-hat, that eighth note hi-hat, you know, you could just close the pedal and not strike it with your hand. And people aren't going to know the difference unless they see you program it and you're gonna have less of a hit there but just the fact that that hi-hat is closing and being squelched at a certain time still feels rhythmic check it out oops that was an open pedal here's a closed pedal sounds way better yeah and let's make it early instead and, and kind of get a little more anxiety pocket in it it's hard. I'm not trying to recreate the original right now. I'm just having fun being creative with myself because I'm going to translate what I learn and walk this way into my own music. And both of those feel, sound, feel killer and they sound different. And depending on what the instrumentation is doing might dictate whether we want anxiety, whether we want laid back, or whether we want on the money. Like, these are great choices, right? It's, it's impossible to choose, and I would wait until the rest of my mix is up and running before I would commit to that if I could, you know. So I hope you dug Walk This Way, and, you know, uh, I got a big grin on my face. It's fun talking about this stuff, especially the timing of the squelch, especially coming off a uh, closed head articulation and bringing it down to that closed pedal. Even though that's probably not what's, what's happened in real life, that sounds better to me. I want to do that instead, so... Try not to let, you know, purism or rules dictate every decision because we are in the creative arts people. Uh, if rules existed, uh, we wouldn't be very creative, you know, or if we obeyed rules, we would not be very creative, you know. So I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for courses and hundreds of free two-track videos. Peace.